How's it going, Jets fans? My name is Alex with my co-host here, Ryan Moran. The first day of training camp. Let's freaking go. We made it through the offseason. I'm so excited to see how this team progresses and the position battles that are starting to unfold here. Some big practices. Zach Wilson had a great day. Denzel Mims stood out. Uh, some really good news on uh, the injury front for Carl Lawson, CJ Ozoma. Um, Makai Becton coming in looking really in just great shape, which I think a lot of people are didn't really expect for, for the most part. But there's a lot of positive stuff to go around this team. Um, we're going to break down some of the stuff. We'll show you guys some videos and some main takeaways from today's practice. But Ryan, before we dive into the good stuff, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great, Alex. Very exciting, obviously, with the first practice this morning, just seeing the videos from people there and, you know, the team just breaking things down and some of the individual drills, you know, position group drills, seeing the guys, you know, run around. It's always exciting. Just get you that much more amped up for the start of the season. And obviously the Jets have had some good news on the injury front over the last 48 hours. You look at the four guys they had on the physically unable to perform list yesterday. Obviously, it was announced Carl Lawson, CJ Uzama, and Mekhi Becton were all placed on the active roster. The one guy we didn't hear about yesterday, obviously, was George Fant. So some people were wondering that. But obviously, we got good news there this morning that, you know, he was good to go for practice. And obviously, the big news, I mean, dating back to our first episode, who's going to be the left tackle? And we finally got that answer, I think. Most people had an idea all along it will be fan and Salah obviously announced in this press conference after practice that there's not going to be a competition. You know, George Fan's going to be the left tackle and Mikai Beckton's going to make that move to right along with Elijah Bear Tucker. And uh, obviously, like you said, you know, some of the big news in terms of what went on during practice, the Denzel Mims hype obviously continues to grow. You know, he had another big practice, some circus catches. And look, if, if he can be that player that we all want him to be, it really goes a long way for the Jets. It absolutely does. Now, we've predicted that Becton would be the starting right tackle for a couple of weeks now. I think most people agreed with us on that front, uh, just based, based on the simple reality that the chemistry between Zach Wilson and, um, you know, George Fant is much better, much more prominent um, than that between him and Makai Becton, who, you know, came in at a little bit overweight and has seemingly dropped a lot of weight. Looks like he's in great shape and he's doing a lot of good things. Um, but I will say this, Robert Sala did say that his days at left tackle are not over. So that could indicate that maybe after this season, they swap him back to left tackle depend on, depending on if they extend Fant or not. But they did say this, and I think this is the main takeaway. I don't care about the left tackle, right tackle debate. I care about how good Elijah Vera Tucker and Makai Becton are next to each other because uh, Robert Sala said that he thinks they're both they could be all pro players uh, next to each other. And I think that he's spot on at least AVT. I think Vera Tucker could easily be an all pro guy if he continues with this type of growth. Becton, I think, has a lot left to prove. I mean, of course, they both do. Um, but the obviously missing the majority of 2021 did not help him in his growth. Now, I think that those two guys, the running game is going to be phenomenal for them, getting it outside, using those big bodies and the athleticism at AVT to get around to the edge. It's going to be really fun to watch this offense operate and work um, and, and just kind of how creative they can be under a Mike LaFleur led, led scheme. Um, but I'll say this, you know, I feel a lot more confident having Fant on the left tackle side, having uh, the blind side of Zach Wilson, just because of, you know, the, the, the proving capabilities he, he showcased last season. Now, Zach Wilson looked great. He said that he's, hasn't been, um, this like, I guess, mentally ready. He said, mentally, I've never been in a better spot. He weighs 217 to 218 pounds a year ago. He was 205 to 207. He's got a little bit more mass to his frame. He's going to be stronger in the pocket. He's going to have a better foundation, a better base to throw from. How exciting is it to see, um, that Zach Wilson is in a place to succeed, you know, not just physically, but mentally. For sure. I mean, I think we all want to see that year two jump from Zach and look, the physical ability with him has always been there. You just want to see that continued growth and you expect that year one to year two leap. And it looks like mentally, you know, Zach has definitely taken that. I, I definitely think you can see some more command and just ownership of even his press conferences and the way he stands up there. I think he's much more confident. He's much more sure. And look like anyone, your first year doing something, there's going to be bumps in the road. There's going to be, you know, adversity and, I think Zach is really poised to, like we've said, as Michael Flores stated, play within the system, take what's there. Zach said it again today. There are so many skill position players on this team, especially in comparison to last year, that you know his job is much easier. You just got to get the ball to these guys, and look, big plays are going to come, and ultimately points are going to you know result on the scoreboard for the Jets offense. Yeah, and speaking of points and playmakers making plays, how about Denzel Mims? Let's discuss Denzel Mims for a moment here because – one of the more, um, I guess, I don't want to see even say underappreciated. I'd probably just go with uh, disappointing draft picks from the Jets in the second round out of Baylor in 2020. 
um, played in nine games in 2020 as a rookie, 357 yards. Then fast forward to last season, played in 11 games, and only had uh, 23 targets for eight receptions and 133 yards, has not scored a touchdown at the professional level yet. He looked fantastic today, apparently. He made the first two catches of any receiver um, to start training camp, one from Joe Flacco, another from Mike White. Um, showcase that long, rangy kind of uh, pterodactyl wingspan that he he has. And Denzel Mims can be a good a good player on this team. I don't think he's going to be a prominent one. I think that you know you have Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore, and Corey Davis ahead of him. I'd even throw Braxton Berrios ahead of him at this point. Um, but Denzel Mims is a good player. Injuries arise at the NFL level. Players do get hurt. Having good depth pieces who can come in and make a make an impact immediately is essential. You know, as a, as the Jets team, if you're a Giants fan, if you're a Patriot, any team, they always have injuries. No matter what happens, a guy will get hurt or something's going to happen. You need to have those good depth pieces. Denzel Mims is a great depth piece. Why would you trade him right now? You know what I mean? The Jets have so much youth on this team. They have they don't need any more draft picks. They need to develop the draft picks that they've actually executed the last two years before anything. Denzel Mims can be a productive player. If Corey Davis ends up being cut next season, next offseason, they save a little bit of cash. Maybe Denzel Mims steps up into that role and fills that uh, that wide receiver two or three role because I think Elijah Moore will be our uh, WR1. And I think I will still be WR2 by the end of this year. I think that Corey Davis is role is going to diminish. And I think Denzel Mims, maybe they want to fill it. Maybe they just, maybe they want to go out and sign a guy. Uh, but what are your thoughts on Denzel Mims? I mean, a really great first practice, making an impact with a couple different quarterbacks there and showcasing his capabilities. I think that he could be in line for a decent season. For sure. I mean, Mims was extremely productive at Baylor. It was thrilling when the Jets were able to trade down in the second round and still acquire him. And his rookie year was very encouraging. I think there was definitely some momentum and steam going into year two. And as you spoke on, it just really couldn't have gone any worse. I mean, he was hardly on the field. You know, it didn't seem like the offseason really went well for him. And, I mean, he caught eight out of 23 targets, which is obviously not very good whatsoever. And obviously, as you said, has not scored a touchdown at the NFL level. And he was great in the red zone at Baylor. So I think that's one specific area you could really see him, you know, carve out a role for himself and provide some of value to the Jets offense, you know, inside the 20-yard line. And look, the the talent physically, athletically, the size, the catch radius, you know, the ability to jump, his speed, what he can do down the field, you know, outside the numbers and jump ball, contest catch situations. To me, you know, Mims can still offer a lot. He's 24 years old, only in his third year. And I think what you, you're really encouraged by with both him and Beckton, obviously the first two picks in that 20 class, it really seems like they've taken, you know, what, what was basically a lost opportunity last year to develop. And they really just made the most of the offseason. And they've come in here to camp. It's obviously a different coaching staff from, you know, the success they had in 2020. And they're really ready to prove to these guys that they can contribute. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And, you know, one of the more prominent names that coming off of injury this year is Carl Lawson. He had some really interesting things to say today. How many moments where you had to take yourself back and build it back up? I mean, what was just the process like? Oh, it was horrible. But, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it's... You grow stronger from it, but I mean, of course it was tough. It was ridiculously tough, but you know, I knew I was going to come out on top and I mean, kind of build a callus of things and you just keep working and keep the process. And um, just thinking about it, like some of the greatest people in history have suffered. So, I mean, and overcome. So it's kind of the people who just don't overcome, you know, uh, that don't, you know, get the results they want. So that's kind of how I think about it. He was like, essentially that process sucked, you know, but they say that guys coming back through suffering, coming back through adversity and jumping over hurdles, they can come back even stronger. And I do believe that Carl Lawson is in line to make a significant impact for this Jets pass rush. He looks ready to go. We saw the clip a couple of days ago um, showcasing that power. He's extremely powerful, really good bull rush. He's low center of gravity. He has bend around the edge. He's going to be an impact player for this defense if he can maintain his health, and I do believe he is uh, ready to make an impact there. Um, how ex how excited is it for you to hear that he is ready to go and he's off the pup list and he's you know going to be a, a hundred percent part of this uh, offseason training program? For sure, I I'm elated about Carl to get that speed. Even what Salah said in his press conference today, you know, you wouldn't even think of it just because of how low to the ground he's built. But Salah spoke highly on just the power, which we obviously spoke on in the film review we did of Carl you know, that long arm and just really the speed, the power he can convert and generate, you know, you're talking about a truly gifted pass rusher who is produced at a really high level. And look, if he could give the jets, let's say seven or so sacks on the year, a total of 50 pressures, which is about three per game. 
it really goes a long way for this defense after some really, you know, significant struggles a year ago, bottom five unit. And you're talking about him with the healthy Quentin Williams, Jermaine Johnson in the mix, putting John Franklin Myers back on the inside. I think this defensive line is really starting to piece itself together to be an impactful front four getting after the quarterback. Absolutely, guys. But this first day of training camp, man, I mean, it's exciting. You're seeing Zach Wilson really put together some amazing throws and had a really solid day. They were raving about him the entire practice. This is going to be extremely exciting to watch in the coming weeks and days. We got you guys covered with all of the New York Jets news. As always, make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on anything. We've got the highlights and all the best clips and moments. Um, throughout the video, so you can enjoy those as well. This is definitely an interactive experience with us here on Fireside Jets, so don't want to miss out on any of the coming content. Um, it's going to be a great time and really excited to build this community with you guys, so appreciate all the love, and we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Jets episode. 